The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. What's going on, folks? My name is Jacob. Um, my number here is, well, let's get it forward, it's 877-927-6648. My email is jacob at tfnn.com. If you have any questions, you can email me there. You can message me in the den or on the YouTube. I'm filling in for Basil today. He's feeling a bit under the weather, so let's send him some good energy. Uh, regarding our quote for the day, uh, from Tom Stack here is, you don't need the acceptance of others. You don't need knowledge or great philosophical concepts. You have the right to be you, and you express your own divinity by being alive and by loving yourself and others. And I think that's really nice. I, I you know, I see a lot of, um, we tend to act very like cerebral, especially regarding um, uh, things like uh, the metaphysical and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty active in my life. Um, I enjoy doing things like jujitsu and MMA. And um, for a lot of my life, I probably wasn't engaged too much in anything kind of uh, physical, no sports or anything like that. And uh, focused a lot on, on, you know, reading, I suppose, philosophical concepts. But I've really found that staying active, being out in nature, um, that has really centered me a lot. And I think we need a lot of that in today's world. A lot of us are cooped up, sedentary. So just a little, just a little uh, nice concept for this morning. Um, today, uh, one of the major things I really want to talk about, um, Tommy was kind of talking about it on his show, um, is some of the crypto. And this is not um, any kind of analysis on the cryptocurrencies that exist today regarding their prices, but kind of just the theory uh, behind things like the blockchain, because I think there's a lot of proof of concept um, in what we see in these, um, you know, either digital assets, essentially, not to say that they're applied properly now um, or that these are necessarily good or bad investments in any way. Um, but there's a lot of interesting head games that kind of go in to looking at um, or excuse me, into what these kind of blockchains solve. Uh, we have the Dow up 108. We have the Nasdaq up 23.95, and we have the S&P 500 up 6.61. Uh, we got the Qs down 0.06%, the dollars down uh, about 0.15%, Meta up 1.39, Tesla up 1.18, Apple down a little bit, and then my baby still Dynamics coming up high. I, this stock is, is crazy. You, it's almost like I've been able to kind of see what happens. I mean, this, this follows the market pretty, pretty consistently, um, and it always wants to get back up to essentially that 80, 87 area that I've been seeing. Uh, let's go in here. We have the core inflation data came up yesterday. Let's take a look at this, right? Because when I, I go on a lot of the um, internet forums for stocks, one of the big ones is Wall Street Bets. And... Um, you know, I have such a love-hate relationship uh, with, these, with these guys on there. Um, you have a lot of them who make pretty accurate points and uh, are kind of educated on it. And then you have others who kind of just don't, don't really know what's going on. And um, you see a lot of losses from there. One of the big things that was going on yesterday is inflation itself only was up 0.1% over the projections. And the real point is that core inflation is continuing to go higher and everything in the macro economy itself is um, still slowing a bit. Um, obviously, we do have some speed ups, but nothing looks necessarily good. So we have here uh, the United States core inflation rates. The annual core inflation rate is 6.3% for the 12 months ending uh, August 2022. After previously rising 5.9%, uh, the U.S. Labor Department reported September 13th, 2022. Obviously, we had another interest rate increase um, What's the difference here with it, uh, general inflation versus core inflation? Core inflation excludes certain items that are known for their volatility, namely food and energy. Um, it is monitored almost as much as the uh, bellwether inflation rate. So this is the CP, this is just the general consumer price index. Obviously, it's it's highly overrepresented by energy costs. Uh, this is not going to get any better. We um, are kind of uh, supplementing. 
uh, our oil reserves here, uh, our energy at least, um, by dumping our reserves. Uh, this can only go on for so long, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, we can manage um, the prices after we kind of dump through our reserves here. Let's see here. Uh, less food and energy, major categories, apparel, new vehicles. This is a huge one. This is beginning to drop as well. Uh, vehicles in general were insane uh, starting at the beginning of this year. I purchased a new vehicle. Um, I think it was a good time to buy a new vehicle relative to buying a used vehicle, but regardless, it was still expensive for what it was. Um, used cars and trucks, obviously high. Medical care. Medical is always good to get into. You're always going to have a nice, safe spot in here. Alcohol, beverages, tobacco, smoking products, shelter, transportation service, airline fares. One of the big drivers of core inflation uh, they're seeing is, is rent. Um, so let's see here. So the pace of rent growth accelerated nationally in August, but varied widely by the market. The, the thing is, is, you know, you can raise these kind of Fed fund rates in uh, order to kind of stifle spending um, and kind of bring, you know, quote unquote illiquidity into some areas. But the rents don't immediately adjust to these kind of things. So, uh, you know, it begs the question, like, if we get to a point where we have something like 4.5%, like Dalio, Ray Dalio once by the end of the year and kind of sees coming, um, will that be like an overshoot essentially, right? Because so much of the core is driven by rent and they take a while to go down. It's hard to kind of say. Um, rising residential rates contributed to high inflation in August as real estate investors have increasingly looked towards multifamily buildings to generate revenue. Um, the annualized cost of renting a typical home jumped 6.7% in August, up from 6.1% in July, according to the figures released Tuesday by the Labor Department. Especially in St. Pete, where we're headquartered, um, this, is, this is wild. I also think a lot of our rent is being driven by people moving in who... Um, who just have more money than the uh, than the natives here? Um, it really blows my mind. I see a lot of people my age who are living in these buildings and paying something like twenty six hundred bucks a month. Uh, no idea how that's able to be achieved. Um, of course, there's a lot of stuff like um, remote work is driving a lot of people to move in these areas, and they can make income in their states. You know what you would make in that state. It's not necessarily the same. Regardless, that kind of stuff drives rents. Uh, that, that might be a very St. Pete specific issue, um, but uh, in general, on the, on the macro level, uh, rents are increasing. Uh, the surging cost of shelter accounted for about 40% of last month's cost of living increase, excluding energy, which fell in price, uh, and food, which increased slightly. Um, I've seen food kind of peter out a little bit. Um, at least the goods that I buy regarding food uh, did not get hit too hard. But I definitely know things, um, you know, your pre-made coffees, pre-made drinks. Uh, these increased, I mean, something about like 50 cents, at least in my area. Um, and the growth of so-called core inflation, which includes housing costs but not energy or food, rose an annual rate of 6.3% in August. Again, is the Fed fund rate going to be able to target this um, precisely? Probably not, um, but it, that will result in kind of a ripple effect where rents might decrease. Um, folks, we'll be back when uh, we come back. What I want to talk about actually is kind of a new model that Bank of America is implementing uh, for mortgages that does not include your traditional uh, credit score. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. What's going on, folks? Um, so Jimmy in the Den said, uh, said, Jacob, folks say the same thing when they see people driving cars, owning boats, and belonging to country clubs and wonder how they're affording it. The answer, many folks lead a leveraged lifestyle, and it works until it doesn't. And uh, that, is, that is true. We can see here, this is Wallet Hub. Um, it says, U.S. consumers are back to bad habits. This is two days ago. Excuse me, three days ago. U.S. consumers are back to bad habits when it comes to credit card debt. Following a record-setting reduction in 2020, consumers added a total of $86.2 billion in new credit card debt to their tab during 2021, capped off by a 73.1 billion increase during the fourth quarter alone. Now, consumers have started, well, it looks like a mouse isn't working anymore, that's cool. Um, now, consumers have started, uh, excuse me, have started 2022 by paying down just 12.5 billion in Q1 and adding a staggering 67.1 billion in new debt during Q2 and Q2, uh, a Q2 record. Below, you can find more credit card debt statistics. This is insane. I mean, it really is. It, it, especially in, when I was younger, when you, I would, when in the neighborhood that I lived in, um, I mean, it was, it was just middle class, but you'd see a lot of homes that had these like $60,000 trucks. And it just made you wonder how, how these guys were, were affording this. Um, I mean, I don't take on that much debt whatsoever. And it still is an immense amount being, being paid every month. Um, I can't imagine like the stress that that does to people. I mean, there have definitely been studies that if people are in debt, not being able to make ends meet or, or tight on funds, I mean, it, it quite literally shrinks the hippocampus. Um, so I, I don't know why on earth you would want to take on this, this kind, of, kind of debt if you're not uh, utilizing it properly. I mean, taking on debt just to buy something that you want and don't necessarily need, it's probably not the best move. Um, so kind of, in that realm, Bank of America is doing something really interesting. So let me speak from like people, that, friends that I have in my generation. Like I, there's a lot of people I know that don't have any credit, and it's not you know it's not necessarily their fault. We never really learn about it in in school. Maybe people aren't necessarily always raised around uh, financial literacy, um, so they get to a uh, an age where it's time for them to buy a home or just 
take out any kind of loan to get something that they need, and they kind of get a little bit screwed um, because they don't have any, any credit. So what Bank of Mar America is doing is doing a zero down payment, zero closing, and no credit, uh, new loans uh, to, to buy homes. So let's go through this. I know the headline here just says zero down payment mortgage. Um, and we'll, I'll get to the credit thing in a second. So let's go through this. So like, putting together a down payment on a home can be, okay, sure. It does require a minimum credit score, but considers factors like rent and insurance payments. This is really cool. And I, I, I like this a lot just in the theory sense, right? So obviously what you're looking for in a credit score is um, you can take out loans Okay, you can take out money and then you can make payments on it back. All right, and that, you know, that's a generally very uh, logical thing. It's basically kind of like a risk analysis on the person. Um, but I, I also think that the way they're looking at it now is just do you have an obligation towards a payment? Regardless of whether or not you borrowed the money, do you have an obligation for a payment and can you meet that obligation? Because at its very fundamental level, that's just what a that's what is required in a loan. You have an obligation towards a payment and you have to do it regardless of anything else. So I like that Bank of America is kind of looking at it and I think they, they need to get a bit more liquidity in, in, in lending because lending is going to slow down. So they're kind of opening up um, their lending to people who do not have credit um, and don't have a lot of money up front. Again, a lot of people in my generation do not have a lot of money saved up initially and it is hard to pay a down payment on a home. The crazy thing about that as well, like on the other end, is a lot of times the mortgages are going to be for a modest home are going to be far cheaper um, than renting an apartment. So it's it's a weird thing. Um, let's go through this. So uh, um, imagine getting approved for a mortgage on your dream home without having to make a down payment, pay closing costs, or have minimum credit score. So let's go here. The Community Affordable Loan Solution. That's the name of this uh, kind of action they're doing. Uh, will be available in appointed markets, including historically black and Hispanic neighborhoods located in Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, Detroit, L.A., Miami. The plan requires no mortgage insurance or minimum credit score and instead uses credit guidelines based on factors like rent, utility, phone, auto insurance payments. To qualify, borrowers must complete a home buyer certification course prior to application. A lot of people that I've seen speaking about this... Um, kind of referencing this being like a new uh, uh, subprime lending. And I'm not sure that's necessarily the, the case. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think these guys are going to get like over leveraged or anything like that. Um, I think these will be like modest loans out. Um, there are already neighborhoods in these areas that are not super expensive or anything. I think this is going to be a positive thing. I would not call this subprime lending in any capacity because the individuals who are completing the home buyer certification are still demonstrating they can uh, make payments that they are obligated to. Let's see what Bank of America's uh, public reasoning for this is. Um, so they say home ownership strengthens our communities and can help individuals and families build wealth over time. Um, our community affordable loan solution will help make the dream of sustained home ownership attainable for more black and Hispanic families. And really, you know, obviously, uh, emphasis on marginalized communities is extraordinarily important. But also just everyone in, in general, again, as I was saying earlier, like it, it is far easier to get a footing in life if you have your kind of like basic needs met. If you look like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, just just shelter and food in general. And then that's kind of like your forward base of, uh, of operations, essentially. This is a really positive thing. I think certainly in areas like Charlotte and Detroit, um, this will be extraordinarily positive. You're going to have these homes that are not uh, uh, deteriorating. They're no longer going to be dilapidated. People live in them. It, uh, this, this could be a very nice economic boost um, for the neighborhoods. Uh, this is a solution, a measure for the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Let's see here. Again, three major roadblocks to ownership. I think this is a really smart thing they do. I think this is a really smart thing they, they did here. And we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. And we'll see what kind of way they class the debt. Um, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. Let's move on here. So we have this these big looming railroad strikes again. This is not the kind of thing that you want to see 
um, in a, a time where we have uh, really bad supply chain issues. So apparently a tentative deal has been reached, Biden says. says. There are also, um, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of interesting, uh, the UK was suffering railroad and like shipping strikes as well, or like the threat of them. And since the Queen died, uh, they kind of have determined to, to to not do that, at least for the time being. Put it off until until she's laid to rest at Buckingham Palace. Um, in a way, I think that's kind of a really beautiful thing. People coming together um, over cultural reasons, kind of putting aside differences just for the time being, um, and and kind of celebrating the life of someone. Uh, when we get back, we'll cut a little bit into this. I also want to talk about municipal outflows and kind of how that affects and dampens some of the stimulus packages uh, that are being um, given out by the government. All right, folks, we'll be right back. My, uh, my number is 877-927-6648. Email me at jacob at tfnn.com or hit me in the den. We'll be right back, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. What's going on, folks? Um, all right, let's crack into this a little bit quickly. So the White House said Thursday it had reached a tentative agreement to avoid a railway strike that threatened to cripple swaths of the U.S. economy. The Biden administration had been holding talks with representatives from both sides to avoid transport disruptions that could have snarled supply chains, putting new pressure on prices when inflation has been hovering near four-decade highs. Business groups and key rail customers, such as energy companies and national retailers, have been calling on the government to avoid a strike. The overall U.S. job market is tight, with wages rising and unemployment low, uh, and the railroads struggling with service issues they say have been caused by worker shortages. Union members have been working without a contract since 2019, and labor leaders had used negotiations to protest new attendance policies some of the companies had adopted. Both sides said Thursday 
They wrung concessions from the negotiations, which produced a deal that largely reflected a proposal put forth by a federal panel a month ago, including about 24% uh, increase uh, in wages over the five years. The tentative agreement must now be ratified by members of the various unions covered by these contracts. This is why it's really important to take care of, uh, of workers in these industries, because um, we might not think about it a lot, but this is, this is like the circulation of our economy. Uh, if we don't, we don't address these kind of issues, we, there, there will be hurt. And it, and it does seem to be a shame that we have to get threats of, of strikes um, in, in order to achieve this. Uh, let's see here. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is there is a potential for um, a 75 to 100 basis point increase in rates next week. Um, but m furthermore, um, I want to talk about kind of the, the municipal bond outflows. Uh, the outflows are slowing from the municipal bond funds. People are selling them off and how this could actually dampen um, some of the uh, help that the stimulus packages for infrastructure, uh, uh, some of the help that they would provide. Um, this is a Wall Street Journal. Is the outflow slow from municipal bond funds? Um, investors are slowing down after dumping muni bonds, holding at record speeds at the first half of 2022. The outflows from municipal bonds flows uh, fell to $229 million for the week ended Wednesday um, from uh, $635 million last week, according to the data from Refinitiv Lipper. Mutual and exchange traded funds have had a couple weeks since the beginning of June when they received more than $1 billion in inflows. Earlier this year, these funds lost more than $30 billion over 15 consecutive weeks of outflows as rising rates affected them. So, uh, again, one of the, you know, you look back at what happened when we were going through the Great Depression, what really got us out of that is major spending on, um, on uh, uh, you know, within like, factories, just industrial uh, kind of sectors in general. And I think that was partly the idea. I, one of the things I talk about all the time um, is the uh, infrastructure stimulus in the Great Lakes region. So because outflows are kind of slowing a little bit here, this could kind of negatively affect that, uh, the uh, positive effect that it would have. All right. So one of the things I was really wanting to talk about today um, is just kind of the theory, because I, I, I know news of it has kind of been uh, dampened a lot. Um, because of major uh, losses in, in, in major currencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. And again, this is not going to be a defense of those currencies um, and how they, um, they operate in the real world. But it's more to kind of dive into the theory of why these things even exist, what the point of them was, um, and then how we could actually see uh, a change in the future in a movement towards something like a decentralized uh, currency. The thing is, at the end of the day, I... When you have such strong central banks like we do in today's world, um, I, I find it hard to believe that a uh, major decentralized currency will ever take storm. Um, however, I, I do see these kind of digital currencies occurring that are kind of um, derivatives of, of, of some major um, either equity asset or, or um, something from a central bank themselves. So. The main issue that's being looked at when you're talking about things like the blockchain is something called the, the Byzantine generals problem. And this is in game theory. The idea is you have a Byzantine fortress, okay, like the Eastern Roman Empire, you have a Byzantine fortress, and you have three separate armies that are attacking. And the only way that they succeed is if they all attack at the same time, okay, or at least two of them attack at the same time. However, they cannot communicate with each other um, because you have... Uh, essentially, essentially spies and espionage occurring. So the idea is how do you achieve this? Bitcoin was one of the first uh, places in, uh, one of the first attempts in currency to do so. The idea is that you can't have a centralized movement because there are factors that exist um, that compromise those centralized movements. Um, in currency today, we have a centralized force, which is the central bank or banks themselves. Um, these, with some of your more anarchical kind of uh, people, uh, the idea is that you know banks come in and can and can seize loans. Um, there is some, or excuse me, seize some money, seize assets. Uh, there was something I read the other day that a lady who was with um, Chase Bank, uh, they actually had she was making mortgage payments. They had actually sold her home. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure how legit that is, but just the idea that these things float around, um, that banks are not always trusted. So. Um, Bitcoin 
has come up with these three kind of concepts for it, right? This is proof of work, this is proof of stake, and delegated proof of stake. Now, let's really talk about proof of work, and the idea is that you have this general ledger that everyone agrees upon, right? Uh, this ledger is anonymous, but it does have an anonymous signature. I know it's a bit contrarian, but that is how it works. And when uh, this essentially proves that a Bitcoin was created, okay, or a Bitcoin was transferred from one wallet to another. And the way that's done is you have a, a certain um, input by the uh, initial transaction, and then you have these nodes around the network. And these are generally just singular computers, um, and they use a certain proof of work concept, and they confirm that this uh, creation of a Bitcoin occurred or this transfer of a Bitcoin um, occurred. And then everyone agrees upon it. And then in theory, you have a decentralized network um, that, can, that can prove transactions um, or uh, production um, took place. Let's see here. So how do we see these currencies operating in the real world, right? The idea, I think that the, the note to really focus on is, is the word is currency, right? Really, we look at Bitcoin, this has not acted as a currency whatsoever. This has been essentially a store of value and has been viewed as a uh, rapidly appreciating asset, okay? Ethereum doesn't necessarily share that exact same uh, kind of identity, but for a while, um, it was just being used as a, as, as a store of, of value and was kind of just like a, a general asset that was illiquid. This is a major problem when you are trying to develop something like a currency. Um, you don't want your currencies to be so expensive. Of course, Bitcoin can kind of deal with that based on fractionalization, um, but we never really saw any kind of transfer of Bitcoin for payments um, for anything uh, large. One of the main issues I see with things like Bitcoin is that one, there is a, there's a cap rate on it. Um, so there's only so many Bitcoins that can be produced. Um, and after that certain point, it's not really clear that anyone's gonna start using it as a currency. Ethereum has been a little better like that. Um, Ethereum tends to be um, at least um, the network that it's on, which is separate from the coin, but is tangentially related. That seems to be doing a little better at that. A lot of your like major cryptocurrencies that are or that are smaller and are being used in transfers are based on the Ethereum network. Um, when we get back from here, I'm going to go into some of the other issues I see with it, some of the attempts to kind of solve it, how I make it better, and then um, we'll talk about how Meta was actually planning on releasing not a cryptocurrency, but just digital currency itself, and how really the future is probably more digital currency than uh, decentralized. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, what's going on, folks? So we are... Uh... We're getting some major downdrafts here. Um, the Dow seems to be bouncing a bit off of it. Uh, NASDAQ also bouncing a bit, and SPX, but we had some major parabolic motion um, just, in the past, uh, just in the past hour. Everything's down here. We see some recovery, at least with Tesla going back here, um, but even the dollar is down, uh, GDX is down. Um, this is pretty wild. Let's take a look real quick at our renewables here. Solar is just kind of wiping anything it did. Um, last week, let's see if we get a nice. So we still are still a little bit up, comparatively speaking, not from its top of this year, but um, interesting. We'll see what else we'll see what else happens throughout the day. Okay. Anyways, let's go back real quick. Uh, I want to talk about how you can you can in theory run like a, a decentralized uh, central bank in a sense. The way that these coins are created, at least in Bitcoin, is you have to complete uh, crypt like basically like cryptographs. Okay, there's like problems that computers are constantly working on. The solution is made that gets sent out, sent out to every node on the network. All right, this is like your proof of work. Okay, this gets sent out to every other node, and the node can then check that solution. If it's obviously wrong, it will be negated. It will not be added to the blockchain, so no new things are created. This, this is interesting, and I, I find it interesting, this like attempt to try to, like, in a way, democratize um, in its purest form the financial system. However, I do have a friend of mine, uh, a close friend of mine, who does work for something called DAO, which is Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Um, I won't say the name of it, um, but they, they have um, a cryptocurrency that they produce, um, and they have, um, uh, they're big in NFTs as well. They actually had a very large... Um, NFT uh, a while back before some news came out. Um, when I, I speak with him about this a lot, because I find it extraordinarily interesting, um, and one of the things he said to me is that it, on the long term, this kind of decentralization does not always make sense. Uh, not a lot of people can always make the correct decisions, especially regarding these kind of like finances. Um, Another thing, too, that I kind of brought up to him, and um, I mean, it's just a general logic kind of concept, uh, but he also voiced as well, is what we see today is not really like decentralized. It's not democratized in the sense that everyone kind of has an equal um, hand in uh, mining um, uh, Bitcoin or any coins in general, uh, because for the sole fact that it is so expensive to get the hardware to kind of com complete these um, algorithms. So essentially what you have at the end of the day is you have something that's decentralized or at least separate from your traditional central banks, but you kind of get these like massive mining cartels that exist, right? Um, very difficult, uh, excuse me. It's very difficult to have like a democratic kind of system when you have people who have more power uh, regarding essentially what is voting um, in, a, in a financial sense here. Um, 
So what are some interesting ways that they've that other people have tried to like address this? There was one uh, currency called Olympus Dow, and the way that they did it was uh, they actually created a treasury, okay? And this was a um, automatic treasury system. Um, in one moment here to get my stuff loaded up. An automatic treasury system um, that created a base, right? And this treasury system held something like 98% of um, all the coins that were created. So it would avoid these large whale dumps, essentially, that you'd see in Bitcoin. You know, you'd get up to another level and it would dump all the way down. I mean, just taking off the table. Um, in, in some ways, it incentivized people to stake their currencies, which is essentially giving um, their currency to the treasury so then the treasury can then loan that out. Um, that eventually became very, uh, it kind of backfired in the sense that uh, the, the person who was running it um, actually was stealing from the treasury. It's really hard to do this because, again, like it's if you don't have very good um, protocols and rules that are followed, uh, you can get a lot of manipulation. And this is another major uh, issue that has not kind of yet been resolved. Um, how do I see this really working in the future? One of the things I can see, maybe not cryptocurrency doing, but digital currency in general, and, and we could call it crypto, is you can have it based off of like a real life asset. The way that I've always kind of imagined a currency like this could work um, would be like say that um, you know I'm a I'm a fund owner, okay, and I have this big uh, let's just say mining ETF of all the major mining corporations, okay. And what I can do is instead of people just having it and buying these shares and, and fractionalizing it down, I can create a cryptocurrency or a decentralized currency or whatever um, and essentially have that pegged to the fund itself. So essentially you're bringing like liquidity um, to the fund, okay? And of course it would still be up to me, uh, the fund manager, how much of this cryptocurrency is controlled. So it's not necessarily decentralized in the sense that um, you have like an equal flow of decision making. Um, but I think that solves a lot of issues with, with uh, the value reasoning behind things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I also think uh, for ease of transactions, if you create, uh, let's say you have like a multinational kind of supply chain going on. Um, let's say you have like a multinational supply chain going on, uh, different countries, you can create a cryptocurrency um, or digital currency uh, that you can all agree on a value and this might be able to kind of alleviate some tax burdens. Um, this could alleviate um, kind of transactions uh, between different currencies. So it seems to me that we do have a caller on the line. Give me a moment here. Hey, Cap. Hey, how you doing? You're doing an amazing job, Tom, man. how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good. Doing well. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to let you know what a great job you're doing. And you know what's intriguing, like, in this cryptocurrency world. So, you know, years ago when this first started, you know, because I do the gold report, people always saying, you know, the aspect of, you think gold's not moving because, you know, you get cryptos. And, you know, it, when I think this true, I mean, I would say that the reality is that, yeah, that there's uh, less demand, you know, because if I, if I take a look at, like, when I was your age, right, mm -hmm. and... And you came, and, and when I was your age, inflation was raging, right? Sure. And what ends up happening is that we were looking at all these older dudes, and they're saying, that, yeah, you know, this is gold, gold's worth that. And, of course, that's that's where we went. I remember buying coins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and then as you were explaining to me, well, that's not even on the table in your generation, right? It's not even close. <laughs> Correct. I don't see a lot of people buying gold whatsoever. Um, right, right. Right. The, the way that I yeah. see what's kind of happened with this, that I, I and correct me if I'm wrong, that I think it was a little different from gold. I, I think a lot of people my age, and especially when I was, you know, looking at the hype a few years ago on it, was not necessarily that I was worried about my um, purchasing power eroding or my or my dollars eroding due to inflation, but it was the promise yeah. of getting such a high return for doing nothing. And so I think fundamentally speaking, greed. you know, greed. It, it is it <laughs> yeah. totally yeah. was. I don't think there was logic of trying to um, really store your value that way. Um, yeah. So it's, right. it's interesting to, to kind of see that. And I think that's why a lot of people like lost money out. Um, yeah. So, right. Yeah, sure. it's certainly interesting. Well, what ends up happening, particularly when they started, you know, if you got it in the beginning, 
and you hit a home run or a grand slam, which people did, then all of a sudden you think you're going to be King Kong. So that's, yeah, you know, and then that's everyone good. hops on yeah. the train. It's absurd. So. Right. Well, well Tom, listen, man, you're doing a great job, and we appreciate it. Thank, I, and I'm sure Basil is really proud of you, man. Thank, oh, thank you, you so much. much, Tom. Thank you for calling in, okay? Uh, thank right. you, man. Have a great day. Have a safe one. Bye-bye. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter path of least resistance is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's ultimate trading newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Um, it seems like we're about to, let's see here. Yeah, we're kind of a bounce off that big parabolic motion, but we're still getting kind of hammered hard here. Uh, the Q's getting hammered, NDX is getting hammered. Uh, this is this is nuts. We'll see how this pulls off for the rest of the day. Um, some of the last things I want to say about it, and, and you know, Tom really provoked a certain like thought with this. Um, is 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 totally like everything that's going on in these this crypto world, at least currently, is it's totally wild west. Scams everywhere, and really the same old scams. There's nothing new under the sun with uh, what these guys are doing. A lot of, the, all these coins for the most part are, are Ponzi schemes, which is the point I was trying to address with um, essentially saying pegging it to something um, like let's just say like a mining ETF or just a, a, a producing um, group of equities itself. Um, you know, I, I had a guy who tried to get, a friend of mine who tried to get me into one and I was looking at it and it's like the only way that value is being generated in these coins is because some other sucker is joining in as well. I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's a that's a set of 
you know, that's a, that's a setup for failure. And I, I really think the idea of um, of cryptocurrency that, that can be kind of a misnomer, or at least in the sense that it can um, uh, impart some sense of uh, safety and security in these. So you, you got to be really safe, um, at least regarding things like NFTs. Again, that was those were major scams as well. Um, again, one of the things about anonymity, she had no idea who was buying these wallets. I mean, I could have had two wallets, created an NFT myself, and then transferred one into another wallet uh, at the expense of, let's say, 200,000 US dollars. And there is no there's no proof that it was uh, a legitimate transaction. This actually happens in the art world too. Uh, regardless, we're gonna see things like these, the concepts exist for a while. NFTs could be something as simple as receipts uh, for purchasing um, and not highly valued in and of themselves. Folks, I really appreciate you joining me today. Um, it was awesome to fill in for Basil. Um, let's all wish him a bit well. And um, I think uh, we have a replay coming up next and then we'll have uh, Steve's show at one.